Coach's Corner is presented by Roanoke Valley Harley-Davidson. Stop by their store on Peters Creek Road for new and used motorcycles, service and repair, along with Harley-Davidson clothing and collectibles. Hello and welcome in to another episode of Coach's Corner. I'm Mitch Stewart and this morning I'm joined by Rail Yard Dogs head coach Dan Brimmer. Dan, thanks for joining me. Thanks Mitch. So let's take a look back <clears throat> at this past week, week and a half or so. You get six games packed in to 10 days. Always a difficult part of the schedule, but you all navigate it as well as just about anyone in the league. You go 4-2-0, both of those losses by only one goal, and you were competitive all six games throughout the week and a half or so. What's kind of your overall takeaway, your overall feeling once you get through all of those games and you start turning towards 2024? How do you feel about the way your team's been playing here lately? Um, yeah, we continue to grow. I mean, you look at those six games and it's a tough time too because, you know, going through Christmas time and New Year's and stuff, uh, you know, it's, it's easy for the mind to, you know, wonder what family's up to and missing your family and friends and stuff like that. Um, but we got a great group in there and they're, you know, they're hockey players. They're dialed in here. Then we got a great group that love each other and, you know, we celebrate uh, that Christmas and, and New Year's together. Um, but uh, as far as on the ice, it's, uh, we continue to see sparks of offensive greatness um, with numbers and then we see times that we're struggling still till, uh, still as well but you know in particular you look at the last uh, four games for us and we've put up uh, I believe it's an average of 45 shots on goal uh, looking at the stats another another 20 to 30 shot attempts so you know we're putting up close to 70 to 80 shot attempts every game which means we're owning the puck which means we're getting tons of offensive opportunities I do believe that uh, you know eventually it goes but Big thing is is making little adjustments too. You know, uh, maybe a little bit heavier at the net. Maybe uh, looking for that um, little bit of deception, looking at the net and, and kicking it out to a teammate. So we'll continue to look at how we generate more offense. You almost took the words right out of my mouth. The offense we've talked about it a few different times over the first couple of months of the season, but the chance generation as high as it's been all season, and the production is now coming along as well. 18 goals last week in those four games. What do you think has kind of been the key to really kind of getting in your groove, generating these chances still at a high level, but also converting at a higher rate here lately? So yeah, we, we talked about that a lot going into this last week. And I think a big thing is, is like they started going, but we can't just look at that and be like, okay, we were getting chances and now they're going. It, you know, it's a conscious effort. You know, we looked at video. Uh, I, I look at Dater and uh, McDade individually, and, and I was very hard on him uh, through the last week in video about the chances that he was generating and not putting it in. And then he turned around and came out with a with, with a great night, obviously get, got the hat trick, but a little bit more determination around the net. I don't, I don't think we can sit back and be like, hey, we're getting the same chances and now they're finally going. We do the same thing. I think it's noticing a little bit of change in mentality, even if it is just a change in mentality, not strategy, of a little bit better dig at the net, a little bit better, uh, you know, heads up on those plays. Um, then we got to make sure we're conscious of that, not just accepting, oh, that's just the way it bounces sometimes. Um, so we'll be looking for those guys to find a way to be consistent in that now. The guys that have been putting the puck in the net the last little while, now we need consistency out of it. You mentioned Owen McDade and some different guys maybe putting the puck in the net a little bit more. Owen McDade. Brendan Stanko, Alex DiCarlo, just kind of a couple of names off the top of my head that are ringing a bell. How crucial is it for you to kind of get some of your other players on the roster, maybe some of the newer pieces this season going, to kind of add in to that common group that you have with a C.J. Stubbs, a Nick Ford, or a Mac Jansen from a production standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned uh, DiCarlo. Um, you know, in his goals, he's a big, skilled forward. Like, he, he's got a ton of skill in his game. But his goals the last little while have been uh, kind of rebounds, kind of driving the net, picking up some garbage, making plays. Um, and, and to get guys like that, like when we came into the season with our roster, you know, across the board, our coaches, uh, staff, like we have the most talent we've ever had in, in Roanoke here. And to see the chances keep coming and just not, not getting it in the net has been a, a bit of a head scratcher for us. But, you know, it is so important. We know we know what uh, Ford's going to bring and Stubbs is going to bring and Jansen is going to bring down the stretch net at all. Um, but to get this second secondary scoring and guys that, really have the skill to, to become a primary scorer for us to start getting some uh, momentum behind them is, is huge and you know, again we're going to talk, talk to them about recognizing why it's happening now you know maybe it is just that a little bit of determination from uh, DiCarlo to be at the net front on those rebounds to get the opportunity at him rather than a couple feet away battle for that positioning out front so you know we're going to break it down and make sure that we're conscious about what is being what has been successful the last four games as opposed to what maybe we were missing before that at the other end of the ice defensively you guys were able to limit all four opponents Huntsville and Knoxville in those four games last week 
Less than 30 shots on goal in all four of those games. They still convert on 13 goals for the week. That's the highest in any four-game stretch since last year. And when you kind of just kind of look at the numbers, you're limiting the chances, but maybe they're converting at a higher rate. Is there kind of something that you can maybe attribute to that? Is there something maybe that you can correct, or do you think that maybe it was just kind of one of those weeks where the bounces maybe didn't go your way? Uh, you know, it's, it's a tough one. It's funny. You start putting in a bunch of goals, and then you still face these uh, one-goal games, and I, I swear the guys are trying to kill me a little bit due to stress. But, um, no, you know, you'd have to go by goal by goal, and, and I think you see this even from the highest level of the NHL when – a team's playing really well, and they're you know they're putting 40 shots on net plus uh, against on the other team, and then they're seeing 20 shots on net. You know, a team getting still two, three goals on those 20 shots, and and you're wondering why it's going one way. Sometimes it can be you know a goalie uh, not seeing enough action, and maybe getting a little cold down there, not staying dialed in, and you know that's something that Ian is going to continue working with our guys on. Is you know if we keep playing this way and we keep playing kind of shut down D and getting those offensive chances. We need our guys to make sure that they're dialed in for, for that 60 minutes because there is going to still be chances. It's a game of mistakes. So as much as we minimize those chances, there's still going to be chances against. And, you know, we'll continue to work on our guys uh, up front to make sure that we're limiting what those grade A chances look like. Um, but we got to make sure that uh, our, our goalie, our, our uh, best defender is, is dialed in for 60 minutes. We talked about the jam-packed schedule that we just kind of got out of to end the year. You get three more games this weekend. Starts with mm -hmm. Birmingham yep. on Friday night, then a home-and-home with Knoxville. You've been able to beat those two teams that combined three times in three meetings this year, but all of them won goal games, all really competitive. What's the recipe for success for Roanoke to have another strong weekend against those two squads here this upcoming weekend? I think, uh, like we talked about earlier, finding consistency from all our guys. Um, for Birmingham, you know, a great great time to be seeing them, honestly. They're, uh, they're on a 12 0 one one uh, heater right now, and, and they're playing great hockey and playing against some good teams with that record, too. So. Uh, excited for a bit of a test on Friday night. The last time we played them, we got them tired and, and off a trip. So I, I'm sure they're going to have a, a little bit more jam uh, th this meeting on Friday. So very excited about that one. You know, against a team like that, it's going to be, you know, we're putting best on best and, and uh, we're expecting our guys to be able to out-compete them, out-execute them. So it, it'll be an exciting game. And, and then Knoxville, you know, uh, wherever they are in, in the standings, um, they always seem to put up a good fight against us, and, and I, I'd expect no less going into the, the home and home. Um, you know, they have guys that, again, opportunistic. You can keep them to 20 shots on goal, but they're going to have a couple guys that, that just uh, seem to find the back of the net. So we're going to need production, and we're going to have to really focus on limiting the, uh, the grade A's that we give up. Last one for you. I know that we typically like to focus on maybe a weekend at a time, keep everything right in front of you, but... You had a pretty darn good 2023. I'm curious to know, you got any New Year's resolutions, hockey or otherwise, for 2024 that you'd be willing to share with us? <laughs> I guess uh, I can go otherwise. I, you know, hockey-wise, I want the word I keep saying to the guys so much, and maybe I want to look in the mirror with it a little bit, is consistency. And it comes to myself, uh, you know, getting a workout in every day and, and uh, being consistent on video, being consistent for these guys. Uh, can always be more consistent, but uh, during the season and in, uh, in the stress of things, it's uh, I find, always find it hard to keep up my, my physical uh, well-being. So uh, trying to uh, add a little bit of that in this season. I can probably copy that as well. Dan, thank you so much for your time. Happy New Year to you. Thanks, Mitch. That's going to do it for this episode of Coach's Corner. Three games this weekend for the Rally Our Dogs. It all starts on Friday against Birmingham at 7.05. And then on Saturday night, Friends Night, here at Berglund Center. We hope to see you there. Thank you so much for tuning in, and have a great rest of your day.